The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad, so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the last Sunday of Ordinary Time before Lent be be begins this coming Ash Wednesday. We have stories in both the Old Testament and New Testament today about the lepers. In the first reading from Leviticus, under the law, the lepers were separated from the people. This was to protect the people from the dangers of the disease of leprosy but the result was that they were separated from the community. In the New Testament, St. Mark, in contrast, Jesus heals the leper. After he is healed, Jesus tells him to go to the temple and the Pharisees and to offer what Moses prescribed. He could then re-enter the community and no longer be separated from his people. He was healed. Leprosy in the readings is an analogy for sin. In the Old Testament, the law guided the people to avoid sin and to sought, them, sought to keep them away from sin, but the law could not forgive sin. Only through Christ can people be made clean and forgiven of their sins and healed. Only through Christ could the leper be healed. When he tells the leper to follow the prescriptions of Moses, it is to emphasize that he is Jesus the Christ, the fulfillment of the law. He is truly God, the only one who can forgive sins. Jesus sent the healed leper back to the community. This is the same thing that happens to us when we sin. We are separating ourselves from Christ and his church through our sins. Through the sacrament of confession, our sins are forgiven and we are reunited to the church and to Christ. As we head into Lent, it is a good time to reflect upon our sins, the things that we have done and those that we have failed to do, all the things that make us unclean, just like the leper. Then, like the leper, we should seek Jesus out so that he can cleanse us of our sins. And fortunately for us, Jesus left us his church, with the beautiful sacrament of confession in which Jesus Christ himself, acting through the priest, forgives our sins. When in the confessional the priest tells us your sins are forgiven, we know that we have been made clean, just like the leper. We are made whole and can enter back into full communion with Christ and his church that we ourselves had separated ourselves from because of our sin. How beautiful is that? It is an outpouring of the love of Holy Mother Church that she has for her children. It's God's graces being poured upon us through the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. It is truly great to be Catholic, and we should thank God for the privilege. As Lent begins its Ash Wednesday, we begin our sacrificial journey to the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. During Lent, we focus on the triad of sacrifice, fasting, almsgiving, and prayer. Fasting, of course, is the most widely recognized sacrifice in Lent. 
On Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, we are to abstain and fast. Everyone from 18 to 59 years old is to have a, a fast of one meal a day with two smaller meals, no larger than the one meal itself, and no solid food in between. On Fridays during Lent, anyone over 14 is supposed to abstain from meat. But we must remember that it is not only Fridays during Lent that we are asked to refrain from meat. The tradition has always said that we should refrain from meat on every Friday. The Second Vatican Council did not absolve this requirement. It did say that for good reason you could substitute other penances such as almsgiving, but it did not take away the requirement. Sadly, most Catholics just ignore both. Fridays are sacred because that is the day that our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. In comparison, it's a meager thing to be asked to give up meat one day a week for reflection and thanksgiving. Officially, fasting is only recommended for Fridays, for Good Friday and Ash Wednesday. But many faithful Catholics observe a much more strict fasting, not only on Ash Wednesday and Friday, but also during the course of Lent. I would encourage everyone to try a more strict fast than the minimal requirements set down by the law. Try a 24-hour complete fast. Or if your health doesn't allow you, how about clear liquids for one day? Just giving up chocolate is okay to train children in the way of fasting, but it's not adequate for a mature Catholic during Lent. Traditionally, meat, eggs, and dairy, all animal products, were abstained from during Lent. This was a norm in the Latin church, and many Eastern Orthodox rites that are in communion with Rome still follow this formula. That's where we got Fat Tuesday from, or in French, Mardi Gras. It was a day, the day before Ash Wednesday, when the Catholics would use up all their eggs, their milk, their butter, usually to make such delicacies as pancakes, pastries, or if you're Polish, punch geese, which are a wonderful jelly-filled donut. <laughs> Fat Tuesday, or Shrove Tuesday, or sometimes called Pancake Tuesday, was also a day when the Catholics would get their frivolity out of their system in preparation for the somber spirit of Lent. That it is the true origin of Mardi Gras as we know it today. It is at its heart a Catholic tradition, but unfortunately, like many good things, it is often taken too far into frivolity and has forgotten its Catholic roots and its religious purpose. The primary aim of fasting is to remind us of our dependence on God the rules of fasting regarding eating and drinking should never be taken as an end in themselves. The observance of a physical fast helps us to undermine our everyday sinful complacency, to break us out of our routine. The true end of fasting and abstinence is not only from food, but from sin. St. John Christian tells us that fasting should not only be with the mouth, but with the eyes the ears, the hands, and the feet. All the members of the body should be involved in avoiding sin. Fasting in this fashion can only be accomplished when done in conjunction with prayer. Severe fasting without prayer can lead to irritability rather than holiness. Fasting combined with prayer strengthens the will so we overcome our impulsivity avoid the near occasion of sin, and surrender our wills to that of the Holy Spirit. In both the Old and the New Testaments, fasting is never an end to itself, but always an aid to a more intense prayer life. Prayer and fasting, combined with almsgiving, the works of compassion and forgiveness, and the acts of love that we do for others, completes a Lenten triad of sacrificing. These three facets really cannot be separated from each other because they have the same end, to help to strengthen, sanctify, and purify our souls 
as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only here, but in eternal life that is to come for those who persevere in faith to the end. Almsgiving is not only about money. It should, just like fasting, involve the whole person. We have our time, talents, and treasures are all part of almsgiving. Frequently, one of the hardest is giving of our time. To spend time face-to-face -face spreading the love of Jesus Christ with those who are lonely or lost often far exceeds the virtue of giving money out of our surplus. Lent should be a full time, a sacred busy time, if you would. But finding quiet time to pray is essential. And that's partly why we're starting on Mondays during Lent to have a holy hour at St. Anne's at 6 o'clock with adoration, evening prayer, and benediction. Lent can be hard. That's why it's called sacrificing. But if we make our Lenten fasting, prayer, and almsgiving more than just, what are you giving up this year? We can experience spiritual growth and become holier and more like Christ in this Lenten season. And that is the whole reason why Holy Mother Church, in her wisdom, has given us this wonderful season of Lent. 